darlings and welcome to Miss Windsor's Delectables and I am the Miss Windsor and welcome to my cosy but quaint London kitchen. Just a quick introduction, I'm not a professional chef or an expert cook like Nigella, I'm just an individual that loves to cook and I love to cook home cooked British food which I wish to bring to you in your homes. So today I'm going to demonstrate to you how to make a cup of Rosie Lee, cup of tea, Cockney rhyme and slang that is darling. Not a tea bag, but loose tea leaves, we're going to do, do it the traditional way, okay? And I'm going to do it following, and I'll show you this, my grandmother's inherited News of the World Household Guide 1954. So we're roughly going to follow the instructions, okay? So first of all, you must pick your teapot. And I have picked Brown Betty. Isn't it delightful? And I'm just going to read out a little extract from the Household Guide. And it says, the best kind of teapot is one made of earthenware. And for some reason not well understood, brown seems to be the most satisfactory colour. Gosh, that sounds wonderful, doesn't it? OK, so we're just going to discard that for the moment. And first of all, you need to fill the kettle with fresh water. So I'm just going to put that on for the boil and now I'm going to tell you a bit about Brown Betty, darling. This takes about six to eight cups and I measured it out using this cup here, okay? Um, so Brown Betty's, they're originally made in Stoke-on-Trent in England and they're made of earthenware, red clay and um, it's done in a Rockingham glaze, as you can see. Okay, so it's rather attractive, and they're supposed to retain their heat better than enamel or silver or porcelain. All right, so we're gonna wait for that to boil, and once you're waiting for that to boil, you must check that you've got all your must-have paraphernalia. Okay, sweethearts? So, first of all, I'm using Twining's Loose Tea, and I keep it in an airtight container, which actually is by Port Marion, so you want, might want to look that up, it's quite interesting. And um, so here we go, got the loose tea, Twinings, Twinings English breakfast tea, golden and well-rounded, as it says on the packet, very nice, very nice and tasty. So Twinings, all right, it's been around for over 300 years, the family come from Gloucestershire, and they have their original tea shop at 216 Strand London and it's still there today. You can go in there and buy tea. Oh my goodness me, I've just made a mess. <laughs> What's it, Daisy? Oh, that goes the tea leaves, darling. Right, now Miss Windsor doesn't like a dirty kitchen, so I'd better clean that up. What a mess, what a messy pup. So I've already laid out my tea tray, which I'll show you at the end. And I've got tea cosies, my great great granny's tea strainer. Obviously, we've got the loose tea leaves and we've got brown Betty. Okay, right, that's coming off the boil now and we're going to warm the pot. Okay, so one must warm Betty up. So tip a little bit into Betty. All right, that's going to warm the pot. It's earthenware, so it will retain the heat. Turn that back onto the boil very quickly. Get your tea leaves ready. Okay, there we go. Right, you need at least one, one teaspoonful per two cups, okay? So now we can throw out the, um, the water in Betty. Okay, so that's nice and warm, nice and hot. Okay, I'm going to put in four heap teaspoons of loose tea leaves. One, two, three, four, okay, immediately pour over the water. Now, according to the 1954 Household Guide, never bring the kettle to the pot, bring the pot to the kettle. Right, put the, uh, the lid on the teapot, okay. Now immediately you must, you must use the tea cosy. Now I would rather use the tea cosy doll, as you can see here, as I'm demonstrating, darling. But it doesn't fit Betty, unfortunately. Uh, it's too small. 
And just a little bit of history about this. Um, these were made between 1800 and 1920. I'm not sure of the age of this one, uh, but I did inherit it from my grandmother again. And um, they were made in Japan, um, America, France. I'm not sure about the UK, to be honest, but you can do your own research, can't you, sweethearts? Instead, we are going to use this one I got from the charity shop the other day, okay, because it fits little brown Betty. There you are. Now, <clears throat> Put that aside, you want that to brew for about five to six minutes, you don't want any more than that otherwise it will stew. Okay, and one little uh, tip, now according to the Household Guide 1954, it's a myth about adding one extra teaspoon of tea leaves to the pot. It will actually taste stewed, okay, so I recommend don't do that at all, alright? Now in the meantime, while that is brewing, I am going to make a cup a mug actually, a mug of tea, if you can't be bothered with all this malarkey, you know, and you haven't got time to do it darling, because you're tired from work and everything. So, for the purposes of this, I've got a little mug, Yorkshire tea bags, alright, because they make, apparently, well let's have a proper brew, they make the best tea. I'm just going to fill the kettle up again, okay, put that on to boil. I'm going to use tea bags for this one and in fact I was looking this up the other day on the internet we all think that you just throw the bag in and pour the water over don't we? Well actually you shouldn't you naughty people. Right you should really hold the bag and place it there demonstrating to you now okay and pour the water over the tea bag all right and that should be enough for the flavour but if you like it stronger then you just leave the tea bag in. Right, okay, so the kettle's nearly boiled. Right, okay, we've got our tea bag ready, and I'm gonna do it the way that I researched the other day and see how it works, all right? So, right, okay, we're boiled. Now, this is a little bit dangerous, I think, holding the, the tea bag as I pour it over, because my little, my little fingers might get burnt. Right, here we go. So, right, there we go, over the tea bag. Ooh, steam, ooh, yeah, out. Okay, there we go. Ooh, that hurts. Oh, I, got, I had to let it go. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> All right, so that's done. So let the flavours infuse, okay, darlings, and submerge it into the water. There you go. Right. Okay, now, according to my friend Rosie Posey the plumber, darling, you know, this needs to be rich and very, very broad in colour and very strong, just like her women, all right? Absolutely. Okay, when you feel that that is enough for you, then you take the tea bag out, or you leave it in, depends if you want your teaspoon to stand up in it. Discard the tea bag and pour in the milk until you achieve your satisfactory colour of brown. All right? That looks a bit strong to me. That would have me up all night, unfortunately, and you don't want that because you want me fresh in the morning, don't you? There you go. That's right. Put the milk back. Okay, that's a perfect cup of tea. Now, I'm not going to attempt to drink it because it's going to burn my lips off. And we're going to go back to Brown Betty. All right, discard that as well. Okay, so get your cup and saucer. And we've got Betty. Yep, yeah, she's brewed for five to six minutes. She's not stewed, she's brewed. Okay, so I've got Granny's tea strainer. Now, put the milk in first because I do not want to crack my lovely Granny's cup and saucer, do I? That would be naughty of me. So in that goes, just a little bit, just a tibble. All right, now I'm hoping that the handle doesn't fall off because the other day I had quite a disaster. Miss Windsor did have a disaster with this and the handle fell off and I had to glue it back together. And I think I made a little bit of a pig's ear of it, you know? But here we go, right, wow. Right, here we go. Pouring through the tea strainer. There we go. Very nice. There we are. Okay, perfect, perfect. Now, one would usually have something to put your tea strainer on, but I don't. Sorry about that. All right, it's very, very hot, but I'm going to just show you some etiquette, okay? How to drink standing up if you are in one of those tricky situations when you're out and about and you order a cup of tea and a cup of saucer. So here we go. So one must 
take the cup and saucer together, not separately, that would be rude, okay, and you lift it to your mouth. Then you get your index finger and you place that here at the top, your thumb behind, your third finger below, and you must not have your pinky out. It must be tucked underneath, okay? Then, do not look at anyone, that would be rude while you're drinking your tea. But you lift it to your mouth and you mustn't slurp. Oh dear, look how naughty of me. Would I get told off if I was out and about? Would I be impolite? <laughs> oh, I say. Right, anyway, so that's how to make a perfect cup of rosé. And one must tell you, you know, that might be a bit strong. You might like a little bit of sugar in that or a little bit of an extra milk. So here we are, and I've got the sugar bowl. Add some sugar. Another bit of etiquette, when you're stirring your spoon, do not hit the sides. You do not want attention to be paid to yourself, do you, while you're out and about? Okay, can you hear? That's music to my ears. You don't want clang, clang. Can you hear that, darlings? Before I leave you for the day, I'm just gonna show you my tray that I set up earlier with all my must-have paraphernalia to enjoy the perfect cup of rosy day. How delightful. Look at that. Goodness me, you'll be the envy of the town, wouldn't you, with this tray set up like that. Now, one more thing before I leave you. I want to set you some homework, okay, darlings? Here I have the One Made Cookery Book, all right, 1913. This, this is a puzzle. This is a puzzler. What does one keep in every kettle to prevent furring? Answers below, please. Thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Tally-ho!